Hey guys, Prowl1701 here, and today we're going to be reviewing part one of Attack of the Cybermen, the first story from season 22. My season 22 set finally made it across the pond and came in. The first video where I actually got to have it on the shelf with the others, and aren't we having a mighty impressive collection here? Before we get started on the review, doesn't that look good? We are 11 box sets in. Who would have thought we would be here now? Four, what, about four years since, <clears throat> since season 12 came out? And we're almost halfway through. Uh, what, season, what, the 13th set will be halfway through? So, we're getting there. It's, it looks so good. I'm absolutely loving that. So, Attack of the Cybermen. I have never seen Attack of the Cybermen before. I've heard good things about it. I've heard bad things about it. I tend to hear more good things about it, though, in that it is a good Cyberman story. And I have to say I'm enjoying it. I have liked Part 1 a lot. It took me a while to adjust to it, because sometimes going from one era of Doctor Who to another era can be a bit jarring, especially mid-story, because I'm right in the middle of watching The Keys of Marinus. Or I shouldn't say middle. I watched episode 1 of The Keys of Marinus <clears throat> a few days back. I still haven't made it to episode 2 yet. But when my set came in the mail, I really wanted to go ahead and watch at least one story for it. And I've always wanted to see Attack of the Cybermen, so I'm just going to watch the season, season 22 in order. Because uh, I've only seen half of the season, and even the half I've seen, I haven't seen in a while. So it's going to be a fun season to watch for me, season 22. Um... Colin's theatrical acting, I always have to adjust to. He's very over the top. He has a very on-stage theatrical presence, which is a bit much. It's great when you're on a stage, but when the camera's up close on you, it's it's very larger than life. It's very bombastic. Uh, he does a lot with his face. He doesn't seem so much like a person as he does a character that's being played by an actor to me a lot of times. Now, he has moments <clears throat> that are very nuanced that I like. But a lot of times, I just feel like this is a character that's being played by an actor. And Nicola Bryant. Whew, I've never been a fan of Perry. I just don't feel like Perry has acted well. I don't know if that's on Nicola, because I, I like her at other times. But there are times in this when she's talking, and I'm sitting there. Ooh, like in some of the early scenes when she's talking to the Doctor in the TARDIS, I'm just like... Okay, some of this is probably that American accent she's trying to pull off. I mean, come on, British people. How do y'all like it a lot of times when Americans try to do British accents and they're not good? That's how I'm feeling listening to Perry try to do an American accent. I'm going... Um, also, while I, before I forget about it, the cliffhanger to part one with Perry just as the cyber guys surround her in the TARDIS when she's just... It looks staged. It looks like an actor being told to do that. It doesn't look very convincing. Just her. <clears throat> okay, say cut, say cut, say cut. I want to stop. Oh, I didn't really buy that. It's good to see Litton back, although my memory of him is vague. I've actually seen Resurrection of the Daleks multiple times. I'd say about three times. <clears throat> it's my favorite of the 80s Dalek stories. But it's been a while, a solid while, at least at least a decade since I've watched it, so it's not fresh on my mind. But I like Litton a lot. The actor playing him does a really good job of, he has a bit of a charisma to him, but he's also a very stern, don't screw with me or I will end you type character. The actor does all of that really well. I like, I like Litton here. I mean, he's just basically a mercenary for hire. Pay me and I'll do whatever you need me to do. You know, no scruples. Nothing personal, just a guy doing a, go a job. I like that. Uh, I like the Cybermen in this. The Cyber Controller is a large fella. I'd always been told he was a large fella. And I think he played in Tomb of the Cybermen. I know, I think the Cyber Leader and the Cyber Controller are actors who have been Cybermen before. I think the Cyber Controller is like the larger guys from Tomb of the Cybermen. I think the Cyber Leader just plays the cyber leader in several different stories. So I'm aware of that. <clears throat> I know Terry Malloy is in it too. I noticed his name in the credits. He was playing Russell. I'm sitting there going, I don't remember which one's Russell. Uh, it's pretty neat with the TARDIS. I like how he's fixing the thing. It's still not quite fixing the thing. Him tinkering with the TARDIS. 
<clears throat> How come it hasn't changed yet? Uh, she probably doesn't, hasn't felt like it yet. She's probably thinking about it. I like that. Uh, the TARDIS turning into the little cabinet and then turning into the PN. That's funny. The TARDIS has a sense of humor, I think, so I enjoy that. The music, the incidental music, I can't make up my mind if I like it or not. It's definitely noticeable. It's not something that's forgettable. But I can't decide if I like it or not. I don't hate it, certainly. Uh, but I can't decide <coughs> quite how I feel on it. Um, I like the little bit when he plays like the Phantom of the Opera bit on the piano. And then it kind of continues to play throughout when he's fighting the cops. Uh, that was interesting. It's definitely noticeable. and didn't hinder the scene any. I just, I can't quite sit here and go, I like it. I'm not sure yet. But it stands out. I'll give it that. I did like the scene with the cops, like when the cop's coming up from the grate and has the gun pointed at him, how the Sixth Doctor's not even phased by him. He's got a gun. I'm not blind, Perry. And how he tricks the cop and follows him down in the hole. And in my mind, since you don't see it since he's down in the hole, I imagine him doing some third Doctor karate or Venetian karate or Aikido chopping. I love that. It's, I like that seeing the Sixth Doctor, well, you don't really see it, but knowing the Sixth Doctors can do, the Sixth Doctor can do some Fisticuffs, as the first Doctor would say. You know, six or three is showing. I like that. Um, <clears throat> and then how Perry manages to subdue the other one by throwing kind of the rock or slate or whatever in his face so he drops the gun and she picks it up. I'm like, ah, Perry's being a little resourceful. I, I enjoyed that. That was a cool little scene and the, how the Doctor locks him up with his own handcuffs. That's, I enjoy that. It's neat seeing the Cybermen converting people into Cybermen. Kind of in the background there, when you see them just up with some of the stuff on them. I always enjoy the conversion process stuff for Cybermen. I don't know why, but that fascinates me. Kind of like seeing the Borg turn into the Borg in Star Trek, especially in like First Contact. It's a cool scene. <clears throat> just seeing them. Something, you know, they're kind of like tech zombies, you know. Something, you, you know, they don't just kill you. They turn you into one of them. That's something terrifying about that, I think. That's why zombies are so scary. For every time, every one of you they kill, you know, they add someone else to their ranks, like the Borg and the Cybermen. So I enjoy uh, that. I, I'm, I'm liking the story so far. I'm trying to think anything else that really jumps out. I am having to adjust to the 45-minute time, uh, the length of the episodes, that, you know, instead of doing 25-minute episodes, they're 45-minute episodes. So instead of a lot of four-parters, you have a lot of two-parters, or in the case of two doctors, a three-parter. Because I think even the ones I've seen, I've usually seen them broken down into their 25-minute components, like Vengeance, I think I've seen in its 25-minute components, and Revelation, I know I've seen in its 25-minute components. Um, <clears throat> I think two doctors I did see in its 45-minute components. So it's interesting having to adjust to these, you know, what would, I guess, be about the average length of a modern Doctor Who episode per part here. And that's interesting. Um, I do like the Cybermen in it. I love the fact they got the excellent line and the, um, oh, what was it? Kill them, kill them at once. I was like, ah, he said it. Yes, I like that. Just like from Earthshock. It had the little nods in there I like. I was not expecting to be on Telos, uh, which I believe is the same planet from Tomb of the Cybermen, if I remember correctly. I was surprised about that. I didn't realize they were there. So it's nice to see this other part of the story with these other two guys <coughs> <coughs> trying to get away. That's pretty interesting. Trying to get to their ship and get out. And try, one of them's trying to get the Cyberman head. I like how he's berating the other one for messing up the plan. How he's getting on. There's supposed to be three of us. You were supposed to get the head. I panicked. I'll show you pet. I enjoy that, because he's annoyed, and he's mad, and I would be too in that situation if, okay, I've got this plan worked out, but we need to do it just like that, and then, oh, look, you idiot, screwing it up. This one got killed, and you didn't do what you were supposed to do. That would be frustrating, especially in that situation. So I'm enjoying everything going on with that. <clears throat> it is nice seeing more of Six, um, as while, again, I'm not the biggest fan of Colin's acting, it's nice just being able to see more of Six. And kind of, I like the fact that Six isn't really scared of anything, even if he should be. He's extremely self-confident, let us say. <clears throat> I wouldn't want to use the word arrogant. Very self-confident. 
So he walks into these situations, um, I won't say blindly, but just walks into them. Do you think we should go get help? Nah, let's just keep going. Well, we, we got a body. Wouldn't that be enough? Yes, but that's just the victim. Who did it? Let's go. Let's keep going this way. I enjoy that. Uh, the, the switching back and forth between film and studio and video is very obvious. Like, there is a bit of a jar, especially <clears throat> early in the story when I was adjusting to it, where they would be filming with videotape in studio, and they would switch to location work, which was very obviously done on film. I believe this was the last season in classic Doctor Who. They used film for location work. I think they switched to all uh, video for the rest of the series. So that took some adjusting too, but one, again, once I adjusted to it, I was fine. Especially since a lot of it later on in the story is studio stuff anyway. That's, even when they're in the sewers, that looks like studio sewers. They look good sewers. I do like the uh, the sets in this look really good. I like seeing that the Cybermen got into the TARDIS. That's pretty cool. I like the other guy, the one that's the cop undercover. I don't remember his name, but I like him. I'm really enjoying him as a character. Um... He almost strikes me as, I'm like, this guy would make a pretty good companion. <clears throat> I hope he doesn't die. Uh, I really hope he doesn't die. I like him. So yeah, part one of Attack of the Cybermen, I enjoyed. I think it's a great start to season 22. Definitely a lot better than the Twin Dilemma. It's a shame they had such a long wait. I think it's like an eight or nine month wait between the end of Twin Dilemma and the beginning of Attack of the Cybermen. So Twin Dilemma just had to sit in people's mouths for months and months. That was a terrible idea. But I think Colin is a lot better here in part one of Attack of the Cybermen. And I'm actually looking forward to watching part two. So I'm probably going to do that right after <clears throat> I get off this. And I'm also looking forward to watching that Michael Grade interview. That's probably what I'm going to do right after I watch part two of Attack of the Cybermen. Is watch that Michael Grade interview. Because I've really been looking forward to seeing that. So I would like to know what you think of part one of Attack of the Cybermen. And it's 45 minute edit. So comment down below and let me know. Have you gotten your Season 22 set in? More than likely, if you're in the UK, you have, because I had to wait for it to cross the pond. Ah, so hard being an American. Mm. Um, so if you enjoyed this video, click the like button and the subscribe button. Click the uh, bell for notifications. If you've enjoyed this video, I do have a Patreon. If you would like to support me on that, there's a link to that in the description below. I have a P.O. box down there as well. If there's anything you would like to send me, Doctor Who related or otherwise, a link to my Amazon wish list, which I update regularly, is down there as well. I want to give a shout out to two of my top tier patrons, Stephen Crane and The Fifth Doctor. I appreciate their continued support and the support of all of my patrons. Thank you very much. I appreciate all of you. Most importantly, though, thank you for watching.